Greetings. I'm Jim W6LG, as you can tell by the call sign growing out of the back of my head. I'm at my house, which is just south of Grass Valley in Northern California in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada. I'm about 2,250 feet above sea level. And I've uh, been here since, uh, let's see, we moved in in 1981, but we bought the land in 1978. <clears throat> I'm primarily a DXer. When I found the land in 78, I stood on a rock out there. It was about uh, eight feet tall with a compass in my hand, looked towards, uh, towards the north, towards Europe, and said, I'll take it. Anyway, um, I've been licensed since 1963. I was born in 1949, so I was uh, 14 years old. And I've been active the whole time. I'm not an engineer, but um, I've enjoyed doing a lot of engineering products. Um, I've actually manufactured some ham radio products over the years. I thought it might be interesting and helpful to me to some extent, and maybe to some others, to do some videos on ham radio basics. Um, there are a lot of complicated subjects, and um, there are a lot of people who like to, to argue one side or the other of a particular issue. I'm not really looking to do that, but I am uh, looking for ways to explain um, some concepts that may be a little bit difficult and others that seem like they're so simple that everybody should understand it. <laughs> there goes my phone. That everybody should understand it, but it um, doesn't always work out that way. Uh, some of the topics that I've kind of outlined as, uh, as the subject of upcoming videos are S SWR. Um, what does it mean? The answer to that is not all that much. Uh, what's a decibel? Um, uh, a simple item that people should, uh, that ham radio operators should probably uh, easily use but sometimes have some difficulty with is a microphone. I know it sounds silly but we'll discuss that and I'll take a microphone apart and show you why the way you're using your mic may not be quite correct and there may be a better way to do it. And I hear a lot of guys on the air with substantial room echo or distorted audio because they've got the uh, the gain up too high and, and uh, to use the jargon of a transceiver uh, the ALC is way off scale. Um, going to do some videos where we test coax cable. I, I have a website where I sell some coax cables. I've got some downstairs in the shop. I can bring them up and um, the um, two watt meters here. We're going to do a test in a few minutes of coax connectors, uh, which I think will be interesting. And I'm going to learn something because I don't know the answer and we're going to find out. And the question is, if you string a whole bunch of coax connectors together, like you might have in your station, um, <clears throat> how much loss is there? So if this is a, and this is a crazy setup, but it's what I had in my drawer of uh, coax connectors that I could chain together, daisy chain together, and I'm going to put 100 watts into one end and see what comes out the other. What's your guess? Uh, going to lose 1 watt, 5 watts, 10 watts? It may be dependent on frequency, and in fact it will be, but um, let's assume for sake of discussion and because of my station here, let's just figure 20 meters. How much loss would there be in this mess? Now, these coax connectors are old. Um, some of them are older than I am, which make them really old. Um, some of them have been outside, they're weathered. A couple of them, couple of them frankly, are really dirty. They're, if they have dirt in them, uh, we'll see. So I'm going to move the camera onto a tripod and set it up in a, in a minute. And I'm going to put 100 watts um, into bird watt meter number one. It will flow through bird number two and into a bird dummy load. Uh, this dummy load is a 600 watt continuous uh, use dummy load. So putting 100 watts into it, I can do it all day long and uh, probably not heat it up very much. And it's, um, it's a good 50 ohm load. <clears throat> and while we're talking about that, um, one of the things we'll talk about is um, what is a resonant antenna? Uh, is it when the SWR is one-to-one? -one? And the answer to that question is no. It may actually be when the SWR is two-to-one. And one-to-one -one may be where it's not resonant. And we'll discuss that. And uh, I'll do an example here. I've got enough equipment behind me where we can do some, some fun things. Speaking of the equipment behind me, uh, the top shelf is a lot of Drake stuff. I, as a kid, worked in a radio store. We sold Drake equipment. I 
fell in love with it then uh, as as my company grew a bit I was able to buy some stuff and so I bought drink equipment I sort of fulfilled the stuff I couldn't get as a kid I, I bought as an adult so um, there are a couple of uh, Drake amplifiers, uh, Drake L4Bs that I've restored. I've had a total of six. I've got three left. I've restored them all. One is in the process of um, being changed, and I'll, that might also be the subject of a video. I'm um, doing it just to do it, so it's kind of the fun of doing it. Um, uh, the transceivers behind me are Elecraft K3s, and um, I really like them. I, I just sold on their equipment, and it will give me the ability to do some tests here on the uh, on the desk that uh, otherwise would be kind of difficult difficult to configure. Other things that I want to talk about uh, in subsequent videos, and I, again, I've created a little bit of an outline about what I might do, um, would be amplifiers. Uh, do you need one? And if so, what's good? Not I'm not going to review different products. I'm just going to make some suggestions. One thing that I'm playing with currently is Arduinos, and it's a funny name, and it can be a very frustrating product. I spent uh, days getting something to work uh, that just defied logic, but finally I did. Um, another thing on my list is uh, uh, SDR receivers, which are really cool. The uh, screen, this one, is an SDR receiver connected to the K3. And it's about the size of my thumb, and it performs like I can't believe. I connected it directly to one of my Yaggies and was listening to guys in Europe with it. And this, and the thing is just nothing. So uh, SDR receivers, uh, which are really the future, if not today. Uh, the Flex Radio has some great transceivers out, and they just perform great. The uh, Elecraft K3 is part... SDR. Um, the thing on my list, really basic things. Not going to get into um, complicated issues, but uh, watt meters. And since I've got uh, several watt meters here, there's a couple of the birds, which are the uh, standard of the industry, probably since the 1950s. Um, what does a watt meter tell you? And if you're on SSB and you're running a thousand watts, what is that watt meter going to show? Is it going to show a thousand watts? Well, maybe, maybe not. And uh, even the ones that, uh, like the two that are behind me, um, that are designed to show PEP, uh, those two I'm going to connect them in series. We'll put a uh, thousand watts through them from one of the Drake amplifiers, and see what they read. And they're not going to read the same. Uh, so that's kind of interesting too. And how do you do that? Uh, the answer is probably with a scope. Anyway. I'm going to move on to this uh, test that we're going to do, which should be pretty interesting. And so here's the question. If I have 20 coax connectors together and I'm on 20 meters, how much loss is there in all those coax connectors? And that is really in your station. You might have, uh, I don't know that you'll have 20, but you might have 10 or 12 coax connectors. Uh, where is the loss in the system and where, where are you losing RF? I know the answer to the question about coax. You lose a lot in coax. And we're, we're going to discuss the different kinds of coax, including RG8, RG213, LMR400. What, what should you use and why should you use it? Um, as a DXer, I don't want to give up dBs, decibels, power. I don't. I want to get as much power to the antenna and I want the antenna to get as much, as many microvolts to my receiver as it can without losing a bunch of stuff along the way. And I have a rather long uh, feed line down to one of the towers in the backyard. Um, it's a couple hundred feet. So how much am I losing in a couple hundred feet of coax? Uh, I have three towers up, uh, three relatively short towers. Two of them have 20 meter Yaggies. I have uh, a controller that I built that's uh, got vacuum relays. I can pick antenna number one or number two or one and two. Uh, or I can have one and two with a delay to number two, a, a slight delay in its in its uh, phasing line. Um, why, why did I do that? Well, because I could. And it probably doesn't do much for my signal, but it's been kind of fun to experiment with it and to 
to have one antenna pointed towards Europe on the short path, which is over the North Pole, and the other one on the long path, which is kind of pointed towards um, Australia and New Zealand. Anyway, I'm going to move the camera because I think it's too far away. <clears throat> if you're a camera guy, as I kind of am now, I've really fallen in love with photography. Uh, the camera I'm using that's mounted above a monitor um, that I'm looking at is a uh, Sony A6000. Uh, I've bought a bunch of thrift store lenses. That happens to be a Minolta 1.4 50mm. Tried some other lenses. They weren't uh, very sharp. I have a 24 and a 28, and it just... I don't know. It didn't look very good. So anyway, as I said, I'm going to do kind of a jump cut. When I come back, I'm going to have these two watt meters uh, in the frame. And we're going to put 100 watts in uh, from the K3 uh, and see what comes out the other end. The first thing we're going to do is test to see that they read the same. The, the both watt meters, if I put 100 watts in, they both read exactly 100 watts. Um, the slugs that are in them, and the slugs are um, devices that plug in, excuse me, the plug into the front and uh, give you um, a frequency range and a wattage, and these happen to be 250 watt slugs, which is perfect for 100 watts, because 100 watts end up, ends up being about mid-scale, which is where you want to read things. So, back in a second, stand by, W6LG. Okay, I'm back. It took a few minutes to set it up, but I think I've got it in focus. First thing I'm going to do is to transmit into the 2 watt meters and into the dummy load. Um, it will not be going out over the air. I don't want to interfere with anybody. Uh, 20 meters happens to be wide open to Europe at this time. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. So let's see that both watt meters read exactly the same. And to do that, I'm going to... Um, put on my glasses so I can see the scale. But also, do they read 100 watts? If there's a slight variation, what is that? And I'm, I'm hoping they'll be both at 100 watts. So I'm going to key in the tune mode the uh, Elecraft K3, um, and it's going to key the KPA 500 amplifier. I don't need 500 watts, but I thought it would be easier on the transceiver if I run like, I think it's going to take 10 watts. And the KPA 500, which the 500 watt linear is putting out 100, I can do that, I think, all day long without doing any damage, as opposed to running the K3 all the way up and keying it. So let's see what that looks like. Um, and I'm going to check I have no signals, the band is dead, and my SDR receiver shows it's dead. So here we go, here's a tune. Oh, well, that's a lot of power, so let's dial that down. And excuse the back of my head because I know it's going to come into view. Also, by doing it through the amplifier, I can get um, really precise. So that's right at 100. That's about 101. So let's get them both. See if I can get them both to 100. All right. That's reading 100, 101. Uh, that's reading 100. So let's um, just leave it like it is. I'm going to unkey, which means stop transmitting. So the power is going in here. Uh, this is a jumper between the two, and then the jumper to the, uh, to the bird watt meter. So my uh, rather funny looking group of coax connectors, I'm going to hook them up now. Which will take a second and see what kind of loss we have. Uh, both these birds have not had much use, so the connectors are really kind of tight. It'll take me a sec, and there we go. There's one. And as I said, these, uh, this group of 20 connectors, right angles, bulkhead, all kinds of stuff, they're dirty, they're old, they're discolored. Um, they're the worst ones I could find. And I have new ones downstairs as I sell new ones. But I decided to go with the old ones because that's likely what I have outside. So let's see if I can get this to go in. There we go. Um, as we're talking about basics, these connectors are PL 259s. Uh, PL stands for plug. They're going into an SO 239. SO stands for socket. So here's my 
group of funny looking coax connectors. Uh, those are end connectors and um, basically UHF connectors. All right, let's see what happens. And we're going to key again. Okay, there we go. All right, we're back to, and sorry again, sorry about the back of my head, but i got to look at the meter. Uh, that one's still reading a hair over 100, and that one is reading exactly the same as it did before, about 100 watts. So what I've heard about losing a tenth of a dB in each of the connectors isn't true, because here I'm putting out exactly the same as I was before. There was 100 and, 101 watts into that, 100 watts here. That's exactly what it's reading. Um, I mean, if it's it's not even the, the width of a needle lower. So the answer to the question is, how much loss is there in 20 coax connectors? And the answer is, at 20 meters, almost nothing. All right, I'm going to unkey the transceiver. <clears throat> and let it cool down. Uh, and then I'm going to put the camera back on the uh, the other tripod. So that was our test of, of coax connectors. Now if we do this in, in a subsequent video, I'm going to do the same test, but instead of having coax connectors, we're going to put a length of coax here. And that's where it'll really get interesting. So again, another jump cut while I move the camera back up to there, back in a flash. It's my second time at ending this, uh, this video. Uh, it was about two or three minutes into speaking, and the camera shut off. Uh, apparently it got too hot, so I have to talk faster. Anyway, what we learned was the a lot of coax connectors don't really create a lot of loss. Coax does, and we'll talk about that later. That one I've, I've done that test before, and it, it is very interesting. But don't worry about coax connectors. If it's properly installed, it's negligible, if not zero, at uh, 14 megahertz and probably pretty small at, uh, at 30 megahertz. More than likely an issue at, at 2 meters and certainly in uh, uh, 432 and up, then connectors become really, really important. Um, anyway, for me this has been really interesting because I, I didn't know the answer and, and now I do. Uh, coax connectors don't have much loss. If you could see these coax connectors, they're absolutely filthy. Uh, some of them go back to um, war surplus that I bought in the 1960s. I'm going to have to end this video because I'm afraid my camera is going to quit. So for now, thank you for joining me. This is the first of a series of videos on ham radio basics, and uh, a lot of them will be simple things like this. We didn't do any math, but we uh, talked a little bit about decibels and loss. We used some meters, and we'll use those meters again because they're really handy. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Um, see you the next time. I'll try to do uh, another video this week, and if you liked this video, please like it. Uh, subscribe if you can. Uh, I'm not looking to make any money. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Uh, just learning experience for me and maybe for you too. Thanks for joining me. 7-3. Oh, 7-3. What does that mean? That's the subject of another video. Uh, you might be surprised. And it's not very 73 or best 73s, it's 73, and I'll show you what that, where that came from. So for now, 73 W6LG. Bye-bye.